Morning, Lord, and evening, Grace America. It's you, Hewitt. I'm not there today, but I'm leaving you in the very able hands of Arthur Brooks, president of the American Enterprise Institute, economist extraordinaire, author most recently of The Road to Freedom, and blooming talk show host. Take it away, Arthur. Well, you heard Hugh Hewitt there. You're in my able hands. I'm Arthur Brooks, president of the American Enterprise Institute. I'm sitting in for Hugh Hewitt. I should say the incomparable Hugh Hewitt. Uh, I'm going to make him look good today. Well, he looks good every day. But in any case, I'm delighted to be here. It's an honor. And I've got a great hour in store for you. We're going to hear from Ramesh Panuro from National Review and AEI. We're going to hear from James Lilacs, who is a big favorite, hilarious guy, knows everything in the world. And we're going to take your calls. A lot of you have been waiting very patiently, and we're going to take your calls. So mark down the number if you don't know it by heart. I'm a listener, and I know this number by heart. 1-800-520-1234. And if you get through, I'm going to sign a copy of my book, The Road to Freedom, and we're going to send it to you. So if you get on the air, don't hang up at the end. Stay on. And our folks who are screening the calls are going to take your address. Well, before we get to our guests today... I want to talk about something we see all the time in Washington, D.C. At the American Enterprise Institute, we talk to politicians every day. We talk to politicians who come over and ask for our advice, or sometimes it's solicited, sometimes not. But we have a lot of access to folks who are in power, and people are always asking us at AEI, what's wrong with the right? I mean, really, what's wrong? Is it bad policies? Is, it, is, it, uh, is the Republican Party doomed? Is the conservative philosophy left us behind? Are we definitively a social democracy? What's the deal? What's wrong with the right? And the answer is, when you talk to a lot of folks and you live in Washington, D.C., and I do, think of it that I live in Washington, so you don't have to. What are we hearing? We're basically hearing that folks on the right, as a general principle, tend these days to talk about the wrong things. Okay, now I know that sounds really critical, but I say that with affection because anybody who's listening to the program today will know that I'm not a liberal. I'm a political conservative. So what are they talking about on the right that's, as it were, not right? To explain this, I want to back up a little bit, and I want to talk to you about the difference between good companies and bad companies, between effective companies and ineffective companies. I taught management for a long time at Syracuse University. I was a university professor for 10 years before I came to AEI. And teaching management is a real joy because you get to meet a lot of very successful people. You get to meet people who are doing some of the most innovative work in business. You also get to see a lot of worst practices. So you can get the data, basically, and you can say what's working and what's not. Here's what bad companies have in common. If you ask somebody who runs a, I shouldn't say a bad company, I should say an ineffective company that's in trouble. When you talk to folks who run these companies and you say, Tell me about your company. They always tell you about their products. We make cars. We maximize shareholder value. We make computers. Now, they might make great computers. They might make great cars. They might maximize shareholder value and do a fantastic job at that. But that's not how great companies talk about their products. If you talk to the folks who run Apple Computer, I've had the privilege of talking to Tim Cook, who followed Steve Jobs. An amazing guy, a real visionary too, just like Steve Jobs. And you ask him about Apple Computer, he doesn't talk about computers. He talks about ripping up the status quo. He talks about thinking differently. He actually talks that way. And the result is the what of their company, the products that they actually make, are kind of flexible. I mean, what does Apple Computer make? I don't know. They make all kinds of stuff. They make music players, they make tablets, they make phones, they make computers. What's next? I wife. Who knows? Any kind of product could come down the pike from those guys because their purpose comes first. Now, Apple is a kind of an easy example because everybody knows it's visionary. Let's take a company that's a little bit different, one that I'm pretty familiar with, and so are many of you, is Amway out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Amway, you know, when I was a kid, they made and sold soap through, through multi-level marketing. Well, they, they do a lot of other stuff today. When you go into the Amway headquarters, there's nothing about their products. It's all about their purpose. There's a fountain in their in their lobby, and the fountain has four words on it. Those words are freedom, family, hope, and reward. Since the late 1950s and early 60s, the founders of that company said, we don't know what we're going to do from year to year, but we stand for freedom, family, hope, and reward. And it's an enormously successful company that does all kinds of interesting things to create entrepreneurs around the world. Apple Computer, Amway, very different companies, but both very successful companies because they start with purpose, not products. Now, there's a similarity between great companies and effective people. 
the most effective people, when they talk about their mission, they're really animated. They don't say, and you say, what are you all about? Uh, going to work, I guess. Taking care of my kids, I guess. That stuff's important, deeply important. We talked about that yesterday. We're going to talk about that a little bit more today. But people who are most animated and who have the most spark, transcendental life in them, they're the ones who talk about their purpose. You know, I learned this at a certain point in my life uh, when I was a musician. I was a musician for a long time. Before I became an economist, for, since between the ages of 19 and 31, I made my living as a classical French horn player. I love music. And if you're wondering all the crazy bump music that's going on in the show today, it's because I'm a nut for different kinds of music. And uh, so I'm subjecting you to all my sort of esoteric weird tastes. And my favorite composer, uh, or one of my favorite composers, was Johann Sebastian Bach. It's a famous composer. For those of you who don't know classical music, it's one of the most famous composers who ever lived. Now, when I was studying music and I was looking a lot at Johann Sebastian Bach, I was, I was interested at one point in a, in, in a historical biography of Bach in which it was reported that somebody asked him why he wrote music. Now, this guy was so productive and so brilliant. I mean, talk about productive. He didn't just write hundreds of gorgeous pieces of music. He also had 20 kids. I, I'm not kidding. Seven of them didn't survive. 13 survived. So that's productivity, my friends. I bet most of you can't say that you've created that many kids or that many musical compositions for that matter. But the interesting thing came about when somebody asked him, he wasn't the most famous guy of his age, but he was pretty well known. Why do you write music? He didn't hesitate. He said his purpose. He said, I write music for the glory of God and the enjoyment of man. Just like that. He didn't say, hey, pays the rent. He didn't say, because I kind of like music. He didn't say, well, I've always been kind of talented and it was a convenient way to, to make a living. No, no. He said, I write music for the glory of God and the enjoyment of man. Now, Bach was a very deep Lutheran. He was a, a serious Christian guy. And of course, those of you who are serious Christians know that he was reflecting Jesus's teaching in Luke 10, 27. You remember that when Jesus was asked how to live your life, the wise man, by the wise man, he said, you got to do two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, the glory of God and the good of man. Now, when I heard this, I thought, boy, I want to be like Bach. Of course, I want to be like Bach, but I'm not a genius. But I want to be like Bach with respect to purpose. And I had this sense that I would be a more effective person. I would be a happier person. I would be a person with meaning if I could live with that kind of purpose. And I really tried to change my life on the basis of this. Uh, it's something that I've really tried to pursue, and I know many of you have as well. Now, back to politics for a second. The problem with the right today is not that its ideas are bad. Look, we fight against taxes, we fight against regulations, we fight against debt, we fight against big government, we fight against things. The problem is that our products come first and so the purpose is fighting against things. When you talk to folks on the left, they don't talk about their products and, and let's be honest here, it's because their products aren't very good. The reason is, or the, at least that they state, is because their purpose is not to fight against things, their purpose is to fight for people to fight for people. And the way they do it, of course, is by redistribution and, 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 and means that I and many of you think are ineffective. And we've been talking about that all throughout the show. But let's think about that for a second. Can't we adopt that? Isn't it written on your heart? Isn't your purpose more to fight for people than to fight against things? Wouldn't the right be more effective if we're all about fighting for people explicitly instead of fighting against things day in and day out? So what do we do? What do politicians hear from me? What do they hear from a lot of my colleagues at AEI? The answer is, to begin with, state your purpose. Every town hall meeting, every debate, every argument, every speech, start with your purpose. And, and your purpose is, I'm fighting for people. I'm fighting for you, whether you vote for me or not. It doesn't matter if you vote for me. I'm going to fight for you because that's why I'm in the public policy. That's why I'm a leader. This is what I'm called to do. You uh, we, I know a lot of politicians who feel this way. They just need to say it. Now, here's the interesting fact from the literature. We know that people will frame you in seven seconds. There's a lot of literature out there that says that folks will figure you out seven seconds into you starting talking. You better use your seven seconds right. How are you going to use it? By simply saying what you're about. People might think you're crazy. People might think you're lying. Doesn't matter. You need to say, I fight for people. That's why I do what I do. And that's what folks on the political right need to start doing. 
They need to fight against entitlement spending, not because they're against spending per se, but because they know that if we don't, we'll be insolvent, we'll have austerity, and austerity will hurt the vulnerable the most. They need to fight for those people. Then say why you're fighting for greater happiness. More on that later. We got a great hour in store. Thanks for listening. And now I want to hear what you have to say. Next up, your calls. 1-800-520-1234. Especially want to hear from you if you disagree with me. I'm Arthur Brooks. This is The Hugh Hewitt Show. Portions of The Hugh Hewitt Show are brought to you by Hillsdale College. Visit hughforhillsdale.com. The Hugh Hewitt Show on the Salem Radio Network returns from break in 3 minutes and 45 seconds. The Hugh Hewitt Show on the Salem Radio Network returns from break in 3 minutes and 15 seconds. show on the Salem Radio Network returns from break in two minutes and 45 seconds. The Hugh Hewitt Show on the Salem Radio Network, returns from break in two minutes and 15 seconds. Hewitt Show on the Salem Radio Network returns from break in one minute and 45 seconds. The Hugh Hewitt Show on the Salem Radio Network returns from break in one minute and 15 seconds. The Hugh Hewitt Show on the Salem Radio Network, returns from break in 45 seconds. The Hugh Hewitt Show on the Salem Radio Network, returns from break in 15 seconds. The Hugh Hewitt Show returns in five seconds. <laughs> 